much. Joining me now to discuss Russia's growing nuclear provocations and President Trump's visit to Iraq, Christian Whiten, the former State Department senior advisor in the Trump and George W. Bush administrations. First of all, on this hypersonic weapon that the Russians unveiled, is it everything the Russians say it is? I don't think it is. You know, uh, hypersonics have been coming along. They're developing theirs. We're developing ours. I think we are a little bit behind where we could be. Frankly, I'm more worried about China because China has immense resources to pour into these new types of technologies. Um, what Putin said as far as this being indestructible, I mean, even a hypersonic is probably going to be moving slower than a ballistic missile or a warhead reentering from space. So it is susceptible to missile defenses, but we probably need more missile defenses. Ours have been focused on a limited attack not a broad attack from Russia or China, and maybe they ought to be able to defeat that. By the way, what gets me is the press reaction to all this. Uh, they're suggesting that, that this is Russia's answer to the U.S. pulling out of the INF <laughs> Treaty, uh, when in fact this, this hypersonic is, has been in the works for years, so there's no way it could have been reacting to something that happened a couple of months ago. That's right. Well, that is ignorant and that is fake news because actually a hypersonic cruise missile is different than a ballistic missile. And the INF Treaty, to my recollection, covers ballistic missiles, exactly. intermediate range ballistic missiles. So two different things. And of course, they take an awfully long time to develop. And we've just pulled out of the INF. Incidentally, the reason we're pulling out of the INF is because Russia violated it. And arms control just doesn't really work with Russia. Let's talk about China for a second now, because a lot of people are more concerned about it. It's it's a much it's a huge country by comparison. Uh, not only in, in population, but in terms of the size of the economy, it focuses so much of its attention, not only its, its money itself, but its technology, which it, it controls, even if it's called a private company. Uh, what do you think our biggest, our biggest concern should be at the moment with regards to China? You know, I think it well, it's multifaceted. Of course, you have just the, the sort of hard power, obvious, their naval expansion and Air Force expansion. No country, including our own, has ever had a naval expansion like theirs and not eventually had some sort of adventure with it. And then there is um, sort of the, the more cyber and technologically savvy component of it. Uh, you know, the president has won a increase in defense budget where it's 717 billion in, in this fiscal year, which is terrific, but that hasn't translated into more ships in aircraft and missiles and missile defenses in the Pacific, unfortunately, partly because we've been spending so much on Middle Eastern wars. If you add Syria and Afghanistan, we spend $60 billion a year. That could really go a long way in more things to deter China, but we're still spending it. The president's trying to, I believe, change course, but still spending that in the Middle East. Okay, so I'm suspecting that you support his decision vis-a-vis uh, -vis Syria and possibly Afghanistan pulling troops out. I think so. I think it's very difficult to understand, and no one seems to be bothering even trying to explain what we're going to accomplish in Afghanistan in another year or two that we haven't accomplished in the 17 years we've been there since 9-11. $50 billion a year if you look at Syria, too. And, you know, thankfully, more you know, the number of people who are killed in action it decreases, but for every one we lose, there are 10 more who are maimed. These are Americans who will never be the same as before they were injured. If you look, we're losing 20 veterans a day to suicide. The cost of this is immense, whether in human terms mm -hmm. or in uh, monetary terms. And we can always go back. That's something the president said right. today. You know, we can always go back if ISIS c crops up, but we don't need to stay there and turn the place well, into and, Beverly Hills. In fact, even though they're at odds, uh, General Mattis uh, had the full support of the president going in and taking on ISIS. And, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he really destroyed uh, the, the basis of what ISIS was, what it grew into under the Obama administration. That's right, David. It's amazing what we can accomplish when you get the lawyers out of the way of our military. <laughs> and that's really what Mattis did. And to his credit, yeah. he was terrific at that. And that was the urgent crisis that right. President Trump faced. And so now, you know, we can switch to other uses of those funds, I think. I, I want to, I, sorry to jump around, but I got to go back to Russia for a second on two things. One, uh, there is talk of them building this military base in the Caribbean. This is an island that's owned by Venezuela. Uh, on which they could uh, they could expand an existing airfield there. Uh, is that of any concern to you? It is of some concern. I think it's probably more bluster. It seems to be fitting with what Putin is doing generally, which I think is important for his domestic political consumption. As for the reality of it, putting sort of obsolete bombers and Russia being very kind of limited on resources, especially because they are at the end of their resource chain in Syria, I, I think it's unlikely that this yeah. comes to pass. If it does, I think we need to react very firmly against the Venezuelan government. It's a violation of the Monroe Doctrine, and it's uh, it's would be very unsafe. And finally, this 
probably doesn't deserve more than a few seconds, but this, this uh, discussion of a, a doomsday weapon, it's, I don't know if anybody out there remembers Dr. Strangelove, but there, there's this talk coming out of Russia, and it may just be bluster, but of a, an under, underwater device that they could have that would set off a, a nuclear wave, if you will, a tsunami that's radioactive. Do you know anything about that, and should we just pass it by without giving it much thought? Well, to quote Dr. Strange of the movie, you wouldn't be human if you weren't concerned, if you didn't have some strong personal feelings about nuclear combat. But um, <laughs> it's always worse to get hit with sort of a multi-megaton nuclear weapon than a wave that could be caused. If you look at our third nuclear test ever in 1946, it was an underwater detonation, a fairly small bomb. So it does create a, a wave, uh, a highly irradiated one, but actually water absorbs a fair amount of the force. Mm. So I don't see how a, a wave from a bomb would be worse than the bomb itself. All right. Christian White and Greg. Great to see you, Christian. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it.